Hi everyone, Wally Nichols here for the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending January the 22nd, 2021. If you recall last week, I talked about modern monetary theory. I, I want to revisit that discussion this week because last week I told you why it meant that tax rates inevitably must increase. This week I want to talk about when we think that they will increase. Okay, recall that the key tenets of modern monetary theory, MMT, says that there's an infinite supply of fiat currency. The, the, the central government, the central bank, doesn't have to worry about defaulting on its currency debt. So, especially a country like the United States with the world's largest arsenal of nuclear arms, we don't have to worry about being forced to default on our own currency debt. Therefore, theoretically, there's an available uh, infinite supply of currency to stimulate aggregate demand. As deficits uh, rise, uh, remember quantitative easing, okay, that's been going on since the 2008 financial crisis. So the central bank just continues to buy more of the government's debt to manage what would otherwise be increase in long-term interest rates. So that's kind of where we're at. MMT balances the uh, economy by, by balancing full employment versus inflation without regard to deficit spending, okay? Conventional theory raise, uh, controls money supply by controlling interest rates versus deficit spending. The amount of deficit spending uh, they think is what is what triggers inflation. Here we're talking about the velocity of money, we're talking about full employment, and we're talking about MMT being controlled by central banks, controlling inflation via tax rates, not interest rates. Okay, now the key facts that you need to keep in mind, and I've done a, a, a white paper on this, and so I, I can go into further detail, I don't want to make this thing very long, but MMT, we have began our experimentation with it in the recovery from the financial crisis uh, of 2008 as a result of, um, well, let's not get into the real estate uh, stuff, but anyway, it really came in, MMT really came into fruition during the Trump years with an eye backwards to, uh, to the 2008 financial crisis. And until then, the, the, uh, the, the GOP theory had been conservative fiscal policy and a real deficit hawk focus on, on, on government spending. The Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017 erased all of that, okay, rejiggered their entire focus and philosophy and it's essentially MMT coming into uh, full, full uh, frontal focus, okay, on a center stage. So the TCJA of 2017 Increase spending, deficit spending, increase the deficit by a trillion dollars and in hopes of expanding employment to full capacity. And it, and it, and it started to work. It, it, it was working. We had the highest employment rates. Um, really, uh, it, it, that's a whole different discussion, the historical uh, employment rates, but a, just a tremendously uh, uh, high employment capacity. And what happened is that the pandemic came along and because of, of, of the mismanagement of the pandemic, the economy being shut down, then the CARES Act was necessary and that expanded the MMT experiment further. So they said, hey, look, if we get full employment, we're not worried about the trillion dollars we added in 2017 with the tax cut. Now comes along COVID-19 pandemic, they're saying, look, Let's not worry about this. We got to save ourselves from full collapse. Don't worry about the deficit now exceeding 100% of GDP, about 105%. As I said here and make this recording, we've got to save ourselves from the COVID-19 pandemic. So that was the end of the Trump years. And so this has been around that long. So my point to you is that MMT is here to stay in some form or fashion at this point because if you've ever heard any of my Power of Zero uh, presentations, uh, go back into the projections that the CBO uh, did. Uh, this is the upper left-hand corner of the chart. Back in from 2013, projecting out 
They looked and said, look, point of no return at that point was 2030. Uh, the interest spending on the debt encompasses all other government spending. That's the, the, the point of reckoning. Now we're scooting that ever forward because of where we're at uh, in, in terms of the spending that's required to get us out of the pandemic crisis, okay? And I, you remember the, the upper chart, upper right chart, total public debt versus GDP that I just talked about last week, okay? We're already well over 105% of GDP just in deficit spending in order to save us from the COVID-19 pandemic and get everybody back in position so that we can go forward uh, and get full employment again, then we're looking at another two to four trillion dollars of spending. And, and that's what you're seeing President Biden and the new Congress getting involved in right now these negotiations. <clears throat> uh, the uh, initial phase is set to go in, into effect here in January as close as they can get to going into it. And then we'll roll out phase two of this in February 2021. So you see the additional spending there, that will push us $29, 30000000000000 trillion, okay? And our GDP last year, $19.5 trillion. So we're past the point of no return. At this point, MMT in some form is here to stay. The big chart that I have down at the bottom is, is, is the, the question of inflation. So this is U.S. financial assets. What's that mean? Stock market, bond markets, okay, commodity markets. So all of that stuff put together, uh, according to the Federal Reserve, you take that as a ratio over gross domestic product. And at this point, two years ago, or even more so now because of the increase in asset prices, okay, we're probably at this point in time that this chart was supported for uh, second quarter of 2020. So about nine months ago, that was measuring 5.5 times GDP. That's the whole value of all the stock markets, the financial assets. Probably at this point with the additional run up, we are probably closer to 6x of GDP. Okay, what does that mean? That means high valuations, and that means not far away from inflation at some point. So when will tax rates increase? If MMT is to stay in place in some form or another, and it looks to me that there's no other way that it can help but be that way going forward, then know this, that even where we are right now, we don't need to be increasing tax rates in this essential, we're not in a recession but uh, in reality, we've got a lot of unemployment. There's no way we've got to have stimulus going in. No way that we should have tax increases right now, at least on those, and, and according to the Biden plan, won't under those under $400,000. But what is already written into law in hidden provisions is we do have these incremental hidden increases beginning uh, in 2020, last year, they start really rolling out this year of having impact on uh, uh, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017. This continues to happen every two years. So it'll go into 2022. That'll be another election cycle, midterms, okay? And absent future amendment or repeal, this will continue until, by its own terms, the TCJA 2017 expires on December the 31st, 2025. And then on January 1, 2026, we revert to the old higher tax rates that were in effect for 20, as of 2016. So I'm here to tell you that when will tax rates increase? They already are. You're just not noticing it, okay? It's because of the way they, they built that plan. They did it kind of a hidden thing because they figured by the time 2022, 24 came around, no one would remember who created the tax rates because you look at whoever is sitting in front of you and place the blame on them, right? Let me finish up by saying this. When will tax rates increase? When the velocity of money further increases by the massive sell-off of assets. Are we there now? No, not in my opinion, not in the opinion of any analyst that I've seen. The data don't show that. We have 6x uh, valuation for asset prices. It's very high to be sure. Are we set for a pullback? In my opinion, yes, it's got to happen within the next couple of weeks because of all the news in the world right now against uh, about additional variants of the uh, 
COVID-19, coronavirus, uh, the technicals demand a bit of a pullback. I view that as a catching of the breath. We're letting a new Congress, a new government get into place, new administration. The roll through February of 2021, get that stuff into place, get the stimulus going, and then I think we're off to the races again, looking for a very bullish 2021. When the Fed can't afford to allow rates to go any higher because of all this interest spending, and rates are already you know, starting to increase right now, long-term rates right now, they've creeped, yields are now back up over 1%, which is probably healthy, and so that's what's going on right now. The real critical key is down the road, and I'm talking down the road, okay, 25, 26, down the road a few years, we've got about four, five to six it, it, clearly, I should we they should surely we've got five to six years, probably counting on at least six years to uh, to get positioned properly for a real big change uh, in, in in tax rates again. So that's going to be uh, the question then: how much, how fast, how well they can regulate this as they go on. So. I'm saying when the economy's recovered post-pandemic, probably sometime between 2025 and 2030, so later part of this decade, we've got a roaring 20s decade ahead of us. But remember, 2023 and 2024 is another presidential election cycle, and we just inaugurated the guy <laughs> this week. So that's, uh, that's where it falls out. I appreciate you taking time on this. Note there's a white paper available. Reach out to me. Uh, touch base with me. I've got to give you these disclosures right here. Until next time, this Wally saying stay happy.